So 45 stops on the North Coast 500. Well, actually I've got 37 stops on the actual route itself. The other eight stops aren't on the North Coast 500, but they're very close to it. They're on places like the Isle of Skye and also Glencoe. So if you're doing the North Coast 500 and you have the extra time, then these are great stops that you may want to consider adding into your trip. Now the majority of the places on this list I have actually been to myself and in which case I will put photographs and videos on screen so you can see what it was like when I visited. For some of the other places I had them on my to-do list but I just never got around to seeing everything because there was just so much to see. In which case when I get to those places I will try to find some stock images to show you but if not then you'll just have to google it. Now I am going to go through this in some sort of order. So we're going to start in Inverness and we're going to go anti-clockwise around the route, which is the recommended way to do the North Coast 500. Now I wouldn't actually recommend that you do all the steps in this order, but it does give you an idea of where on the route these stops are. So it will help you when it comes to planning your trip and what it is that you want to see. So with the introduction done, let's crack on because we've got a lot of stops to get through. So we're going to start near Inverness and the first one on my list is Shannon Re Point. This is basically where you can see dolphins. So the tide goes out and as it comes back in, the dolphins chase the fish into, I think it's like a bay and this is where they feed. Now if you obviously get there as the tide is coming in, you're very likely to see the dolphins as they chase the fish in to feed. Now stop number two is Rogie Falls. This is basically a series of waterfalls. You can get to it via a short woodland walk from the car park. And what's really nice about this place is that it also has a suspension bridge. It is a little bit bouncy, but it does mean that you get to see the waterfalls from a different point of view. Also, if you go at the right time of year, you can also see salmon leaping upstream. Now stop number three is the Touchstone Maze. Now I never got to see this one, but it's basically a labyrinth of rocks. It's 81 stones arranged in five connecting circles. And I believe there's some history to this. I don't just think people have placed them there. I think there is a historical reason behind that, but you will have to check that out for yourself. Number four is Fairy Glen Falls. And I found this place to be very magical, especially because on the way to the falls, as you walk through the woodland, the locals, or I'm assuming it's the locals, have placed little like fairy doors and bells and little trinkets on the route. So it just kind of adds to the magical fairy feeling. Now the falls themselves are on two different levels and then it's connected by smaller little waterfalls. And I believe, if I remember my research correctly, that in the past, the children used to come and lay flowers in the fairy pools. And it was the idea to thank the fairies and to get them to help keep their drinking water clean. I think that was it. But moving on to number five, this is one that I never got to go to, but it is the storehouse. So it's a restaurant, a food hall and a gift shop with views over the Black Isle. And then number six, which kind of most people will be that excited about, but I thought it was brilliant, was the egg box shop. It's basically an egg vending machine. You drive up to it, it's like this little shed. You go inside, you can pay via cash or card, and you basically just get your eggs out of a vending machine. Complete tourist attraction, but I absolutely loved it. I got eggs from there. They were delicious and they were very good value and they were free range and I was supporting a local business. So for me, it was just a win all round. Okay, so I missed one out when I was recording this video, and that is the Firish Monument. It's a historical landmark at the top of the hill, and as you can see, it just has the most spectacular views. It's a great walk that I recommend you do. Okay, so that was kind of the Inverness area. Now let's make our way north up the east coast of the route. So number seven on my list is the Falls of Shin. Again, this is one that I never got to go to, although a friend of mine recommended I should have went. But from my research, it basically says it's a waterfall where you can see salmon leaping. It also has a restaurant, a gift shop, a motorhome service point and a stopover point. It has a play park, a forest walk and a river viewing platform. So one that you should add to your list, even though I sadly missed on that one. Number eight is Cocoa Mountain. Now there's two of these on the route. 
I never went to this one, I went to the one later on, but it's meant to serve the world's best hot chocolate. Personally, I didn't think it was that great, although they do other types of chocolate treats. Uh, I had a chocolate croissant in mine, and you can buy a lot of little like artisanal chocolates. It's basically a chocolate shop, essentially. But moving on to stop number nine, and this is Dun Robin Castle and Gardens. This is a really popular stop. Um, I never went to it because it's a real popular stop and I'm not a fan of people, but basically it's a huge chateau type castle and you can go inside, you can view the gardens, there's also falconry displays and experiences. Now number 10, I had this on my list but I decided I didn't have time to see it and then I accidentally saw it. So this is the Wolfstone. It basically marks the place where the last wild wolf was supposedly killed in Scotland. Now, as I said, I didn't. I thought it was in a rush. I was like, okay, I'm just going to drive straight to my next campsite. I don't have time to see that. But then on the way, I ended up stopping over in a lay-by. And as I got out to kind of have a little break, I noticed this big stone. And I was like, oh. And it said the wolf stone. And I ended up seeing it. It's not that fascinating. It is just a, a carved stone. But, you know what I mean, if you're on that way anyway and you need to stop in a lay-by, probably a good place to stop. Now, number 11 on my list, which I'm probably going to pronounce incorrectly, but I'll give it a shot, is Usdale Brock. This is basically a dry stone tower built during the Iron Age, about 2,000 years ago. Again, this is one that I never got to go to, but it does say that you can park and it's basically just like a two kilometre walk round trip to go and see the fort and then come back again. Apparently there's a lot of historical Scottish significance to this. Um, I'm guessing when you get there you will find more information on boards, etc. But it is one that I, I am kind of gutted that I missed out on. Now number 12 is Waligo Steps. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all. But this was one of my favourite stops. Not so much the steps themselves. The steps are great, tiring, but great. But for me is before you go down the steps, you can actually walk out onto a ledge. It is very steep. Make sure you are very sure footed because you can fall and it's a long way down. But you can actually walk out. And if you look to your left, there's just like this glorious waterfall. And that felt very magical for me. And it was like just the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. And I think it was more because I didn't expect it. I just expected to be walking out on this ledge and then all of a sudden this beautiful waterfall was there. Uh, but you can, of course, walk down the steps, explore down the bottom and come back up again. Just know that the steps that you walk down, you have to walk back up again. There's no lift. Now, number 13 on my list is Pulg Pulg Puldagon. I'm going to go with that. Farm shop and restaurant, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a family run shop and restaurant. Number 14 is the Castle of Old Wick. This is basically a historical landmark. We went to go see it and apparently some things had been falling off it so they had basically shut it off to public access and it was all had fences around it and you couldn't actually go to it you could only see it from a distance but it was still nice to walk around that area it was still a lovely walk and it was still kind of nice to see it now stop number 15 is also a castle but this compromises the ruins of two castles so it's castle sinclair Gernigo. i'm gonna go with that probably wrong now, I really wanted to see this one, but I couldn't get to it. There was roadworks on one of the roads to the castle, and no matter how much I kept checking my Google Maps and trying to see if I could get around it a different way, I just couldn't find out how to get there. And then after a while of faffing around, I just give up and went on to the next stop. But yeah, I would recommend seeing that one if you are able to. Now, number 16 is also a castle. This is partly ruined and it's Old Keese Castle. I saw this from a distance. So I parked up and we started walking to the castle, but there was cows <laughs> and I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of cows. I'm okay with sheep, I'm okay with horses, not cows. Only when I have my dog with me, I tend to find that cows are fine if I'm just on my own, but not so good when I have my dog. And even if I put my dog on a lead, I still don't like to be around cows so I kind of walked as far as I dare took some photographs of it and then went back but yeah so I, I, I didn't have very much luck on my castle hunting because Castle of Old Wick was shut off 
couldn't get to the castle Sinclair because of roadworks and I couldn't get to the old Kiss castle because of cows. But hopefully you will have more success on your trip. Well, moving on to stop number 17, and this is the John O'Groats signpost. If you're going all the way up to John O'Groats, then you have to take the obligatory photograph. Now, whilst you're at the signpost, you can do stop number 18A and 18B, which basically is where you walk from the signpost and you walk along the coast first to Duncansby Lighthouse. And the lighthouse is the most north easterly part of the mainlands. And then after the lighthouse, you keep going a little bit further and you can also see Duncansby stacks, which are basically just huge triangular sea stacks. Okay, so that was going up the east coast. Now let's go west across the top of the route. So stop number 19 is Dunnett Beach. This is basically just a beautiful sandy beach. If you wanna have a, a beach day or if you enjoy beaches, pop this one on your list. Number 20, I wanted to get to this, but I didn't, and it is the Lime Kilns. Now, basically, this is a little island, and it's kind of out a little bit, but it's connected to the mainland by, like, a little sandy beach area, so you can actually walk to it. And basically, it has four large, well-preserved lime kilns. Um, again, I wanted to go to it, but ran out of time. Now, stop number 21 is Smoo Cave. This is fantastic, it's really big, and because it's so big, none of the photographs or the videos that I took do the place justice, because you can't fit it all in one photograph. Now, I got to see the first chamber and the second chamber, which has a waterfall in it. Now, if you want to explore more of the cave, you have to go on a boat tour, and I think the cost for it at the time I went was 10 pounds. Now, I was there ready to pay, and I was excited, I wanted to go on this boat tour, but unfortunately the weather conditions when I visited meant that it was unsafe and the boat tours were cancelled. So sadly I never got to go, but just note that there is a boat tour, it's about £10, take cash and hopefully you can experience more of the cave than I did. Now stop number 22 is just down the road from Smoo Cave and that is Sango Sands Viewpoint. It's basically like this wooden walkway that runs along a ridge which takes you to a nice viewing platform to just take in the views of Sango Bay. Stop number 23 is another Cocoa Mountain. So again, that's that chocolate shop that I was talking about earlier. This is the one that I went to. As mentioned, it didn't really like the hot chocolate, but I did get some other small chocolates, which I really enjoyed, and a toffee and white chocolate croissant. It's also nice as well that the place is actually dog friendly, so you can take your dog in there as well and enjoy some chocolate. Seems really strange actually taking your dog into a chocolate shop. Obviously don't feed any chocolate to your four-legged friend, but yeah, they're allowed in anyway. And the last stop for this section, stop number 24, is Sandwood Bay Beach. Now, I really want to go to this beach because it's secluded and remote, and because I don't like people, it just sounded perfect for me. But it's quite a walk from the car park, and again, I just ran out of time. I didn't have the time to drive, park, and then go on this trek to this beach. But apparently it's got pink sand dunes. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not, but someone told me the sand dunes are pink. So if you go to that beach, please let me know if they are pink. Okay, so that's the top done. Now let's come down the west coast, which I think is the best part of the North Coast 500. Stop number 25, which you don't really have to stop at, you are going to go over it anyway, is Kilescu Bridge. Again, probably pronouncing that wrong. The thing about this bridge I find is that you look at these big aerial photographs of it and it looks completely stunning. It doesn't feel like what it looks like when you drive across it, it just feels like a normal bridge. And even when you park next to it and take photographs of it, it's just not the same as those amazing aerial shots, but it's still something to say, oh, I drove across that. And you will do it anyway, whether you decide to stop or not. Stop number 26 is Wailing Widow Falls. This is basically a waterfall that comes out of a lock. So you have the lock at the top and then a waterfall down a huge gorge in the middle. You can actually view this waterfall from two points. So you can walk through the gorge and see it from the bottom. And you can also walk round and up to the top of the lock and view it from the top. It's a little bit scary from the top because it is a very big drop, but it was kind of nice still to see it from that angle as well. Now stop number 27, I cannot pronounce this at all, which is S. Atuel Aluin. 
basically it's Great Britain's highest waterfall at 200 meters but there is quite a walk to it so and it's boggy and I started to walk to it um, we'd seen a couple of other things that day and decided that I wanted to go see this waterfall and me and my dog started on the way to the waterfall but the weather was horrendous it was wind it was rain very deep bog my shoes were wet my socks are wet and I just thought I'm not having any fun and I turned around and went back um, but it is one that I kind of wish I kind of just sucked it up a little bit and went anyway because it would have been cool to see Great Britain's highest waterfall but yeah you do have to trek to it through some mud and through some bogs but moving on to 28 a much nicer waterfall which is easier to get to and that is Clash Nessie Falls so you can actually park and this is a short little walk to it and it's a fantastic waterfall I think it's probably the most picturesque one because it kind of splinters off in loads of different areas and you can stand directly underneath it as well Stop number 29 is a food one and this is Lochinva Larder, basically a big pie shop. Huge pies, stuffed to the brim with filling, absolutely delicious, recommend you go, especially if you like pies. Stop number 30 is Ardbreck Castle. Now you are going to see this anyway, regardless of whether you choose to stop or not, you will drive past it and you will see it out of your window. Basically a castle ruin that sits on like a little island type area. You can park up and walk to it and walk around the island as well, which I do recommend because it was just some great views from there and it was nice to see it from all different perspectives. Stop number 31 is the Bone Caves. And these are basically caves that are set in kind of like the side of a cliff. And they're called the Bone Caves because when they were excavated, they found the bones of animals such as polar bears, lynx, arctic foxes, etc. And they were thought to be from the Ice Age. Now to get to the Bone Caves, you have to walk over this like rocky trail and then you kind of go round and up to the caves. If you enjoy hiking, you will enjoy the walk. Stop number 32 is the Seafood Shack in Ullapool. I absolutely love this place. The menu changes daily because they cook whatever they catch so the seafood is always fresh and it's very good value and just super tasty. Stop number 33 is one that I never had chance to go to and that is Curry Shallock Gorge. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this is a nature reserve. It's a mile long canyon with waterfalls and a Victorian suspension bridge. Stop number 34 is another food one and this is Apple Cross Smokehouse. They basically sell salmon, trout, shellfish, pate, cheeses, etc. Anything that you could think of that can be smoked. Stop number 35 is the, and I can't pronounce this at all but I will try, is the Bilak Nabat Viewpoint. Basically that big dangerous winding road. So the viewpoint is right at the top and you're meant to have this fantastic view, or so I'm told. When I went, I just got low cloud, fog and crappy weather. It was definitely one of those Instagram versus reality moments. Now from there, you can actually drive down the road. I went and did it anyway, even though I couldn't see a thing. And because I couldn't see anything, I didn't see what the fascination was about. It was just a normal twisty road to me. But apparently the views are spectacular, or so I'm told. Hopefully you will have better weather and clearer conditions when you visit. Now stop number 36 is the Kiss Horn Seafood Bar. I didn't get to go to this one, but this is a log cabin serving the catch of the day. And then number 37, which again, I didn't get to go to. I drove past it and I kind of rubbernecked out the window a little bit, wanting to go see it, but I was on a bit of a tight schedule. And this is the Eileen Donan Castle. It's basically a restored castle on an island where three locks meet. And you can also have a tour around the inside. Okay, so that is my 37 stops on the North Coast 500. We're now going to go into the eight bonus stops. The first four are on the Isle of Skye. So the first one is the Fairy Pools. These are basically waterfalls and pools with lovely clear blue water that's very popular for wild swimming in. Number two is the Old Man of Store. If you love hiking, you need to do this hike. It is spectacular, 
one of the best hikes I've ever done. The scenery, you're looking at it and you're just like, this isn't real. Like you can't take it in. And looking back at my photographs does not invoke the same feeling I had as when I was actually stood there and you could actually take in the size and the scale. But fantastic hike, I do recommend you make time to do it. Number three is the Fairy Glen. This was lovely and yeah, it does feel kind of magical. I'll be honest though that I, I found it a bit anticlimactic, mainly because I had done the Old Man of Store that morning and then went to the Fairy Glen in the afternoon. And for me, it just didn't compare to the Old Man of Store, but it was lovely nonetheless. And I think I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't have had such a spectacular hike in the morning, if that makes sense. Now the last stop that I have for you on the Isle of Skye is Kilt Rock and Milk Falls. Again, I never got to go to this one, but basically the cliffs resemble kilts and there's a waterfall over the side. Okay, so now we're on the home stretch. You've got my last four stops and these are around Glencoe and Fort William. The first one is the Glenfinnan Railway and the Glenfinnan Viaduct. These are basically made famous from Harry Potter because it is the Harry Potter train. Now, I didn't know the train was still running. I thought I was just going to see a viaduct. So I remember I parked up and was just taking my time and I was walking up to the viewpoint. And then I heard a steam train because obviously it has a very loud and distinct noise. And I thought, I thought, oh my God, the train's actually going over the viaduct. And me and my dog just ran up the last of the steps and I managed to just catch the train going past and I got a very crap video of it but I was so glad I got to see it. If you're a fan of Harry Potter then this is one that you want to put on your list. Now number six is the Core Patch Shipwreck um, also known as the Old Boat of Quail. It used to be um, a fishing boat and I believe it used to catch mackerel. The owner then wanted to turn it into a floating restaurant but there was a storm the boat broke free from its mooring and then the coast guards dragged it back in and I think they just kind of left it on the beach and I think that's where it's stayed. But it's um, very nice to be able to go see and take in the scale of it and it's made even more dramatic with the Scottish mountains in the background. Now bonus stop number seven is Plodder Falls. This is has a lovely walk around. You can have a longer walk or a shorter walk depending on what you choose to do that day. But Plodder Falls is basically a really high unbroken waterfall. You can view it from the bottom and you can also view it from the top. They've got a nice viewing platform that goes out so you can actually look over the waterfall. I quite enjoyed that. It did make my knees shake a little bit, but it was nice to get the waterfall from the top and the bottom. So my last bonus stop and the final one of this video is Steel Falls. This was one of my favourite stops of the trip. So you get to the falls via the Steel Falls path, which is basically like a rocky track. You get to pass loads of little waterfalls on the way and you also walk along the side of a big stream. And then it kind of opens up and you can see the falls in the distance. Now, in order to get to them, you either have to walk through the river. It's very shallow, so you can just take your shoes off. Or you can go across like this little tightrope bridge. And then you can stand at the base of this amazingly high waterfall. And it was just spectacular. Highly recommend you do that one. So that wraps up my 45 stops. I hope you found this video helpful when it comes to planning your North Coast 500 trip. If you've already been and if you think there are other stops that you would recommend that should be on this list, then please pop them in the comments below. But I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.